what does nature teach us about self-organizing from the bottom up and those origins of how you got started? I started collecting in 1990. So it was, I've been watching it for a long time and it has self-organized from the bottom up. And so one of the things life does is find ways to handle flow, mm -hmm. form follows flow, right? And so flow of anything. You know, so in this case, you know, it was the flow of, of all these great ideas from the natural world. And um, we have been basically creating structures, flow structures, to allow these beautiful ideas to come from the natural world into human systems design. And it started, you know, Dana Baumeister knocked on my door in 1998. Uh, we started the guild. We started a consultancy, but she had just read the book and she was the part of this growing community. She said, I want to, I want to do this. And I was like, do what, you know, and we, we sat for, I don't know, the story changes 11 hours, 14 hours. It was a long time. Laura was feeding and watering us. And we basically came up with sort of what this field, you know, might, how we might serve it basically. And we came up with this apt organic metaphor, which was a flow structure, like your, your veins and your arteries are flow structures and the, you know, the phloem and the, the capillary tubes and trees and branches and they're flow structures. They get things, nutrients to where they need to go. And life is full of these flow structures and, that, and they self-organize in response to what's, you know, okay, how do we gracefully handle the new flow? And what was happening at that time is that all these companies were actually calling me. I was a writer. They were calling me and saying, you know, would you bring your biologist to the design table? And so that was the flow. And Dana and I started to create this flow structure, you know, which was this self-organized consultancy. And there were all these people that would come and call us and say, I want to do a film or I want to teach K through 12. And so we didn't have an organization, she and I. I mean, we hadn't started the field yet. And we just called people or wrote to them, emailed them and said, you know, if you want to come to Montana, we did one in, we did these gatherings, um, Arizona, uh, Kansas and Montana. And we would say, you know, if you want to come, come and we'll talk about what to do with this emerging discipline. And they all came. And it was amazing. It was like David Oki, the designer and, you know, Pax Scientific, Jay Harmon and, all these people that were Jeremy Flutie and these RMI folks and just anybody who had an interest who were, was attracted to the flame of this idea. And, you know, in the third gathering, we said, well, it looks like there's this flow of, you know, we keep getting like people wanting us to help them with their eighth grade homework. And maybe it's time, you know, to, to democratize this and send it out. And, and that's when Brian E. Schwann was at that gathering. And we decided, the community said, we should have a nonprofit. And that was the beginning of the Biomimicry Institute. And she stepped up and said, well, I'll help you get it started. And um, yeah, yeah. So that's, and it's happened. So we've been responding, right? And it's in the word movement, yeah. right? It's flow. It's just, and so you, so life self-organizes to meet this, to meet, if there's a really energetic flow to gracefully handle it, it'll self-organize new, new roots networks or new my, mycelial networks, right? And that's every time that um, there was more interest, we created more things. So Dana and I would create these workshops and first they were a week. And then, you know, now she's, she teaches at the Center for Biomimicry. She teaches a two-year master course and online course, um, an in-person certificate, biomimicry professional certificate. Hundreds and hundreds of people are going through these programs. Um, you know, at the Institute, when we had all this, we were gathering all this information about biological strategies because we were in a consultancy. Um, and we thought, no, the world needs to know about this. This is a flow that we need to get out. And that's how Ask Nature started. <laughs> Or like, let's put up a website and get this out, get this out to the world. And let's start the Biomimicry Educators Network, 10,000 teachers. And let's, it was just us trying to sort of create a home 
you know, you can think of a flow structure or a home for, for this burgeoning uh, group of people. And, you know, you've been working now with the, with, you know, with the networks and bringing on, tell folks about the networks and how many there are now. It's incredible. I mean, some of the things, I, I think we've all felt this in inclusiveness and from the origin story, it's so clear that that was an intention and being able to create this model where you can share it with the world so that they get to see themselves and then they get to grow it. It's, it's amazing. And between Ask Nature, yes, having all of these solutions and it's your go-to place to learn and connect and figure out some of these solutions. But to even think that now we have gone from youth education all the way to startups and really bringing markets to these innovations that are so needed at time right now. And through our Ray of Hope Prize, we do that. Uh, we work with universities through the launch pad. But one of the, it's been such an honor to be able to connect with the networks on this depth. And when we relaunched it at the end of last year, we really wanted a clean start because some people had been active and you know some had been doing amazing work. Others were trying to merge together. And so we were, let's see what the landscape is now. And what that offered was, is now we have 36 official global network groups spanning 26 countries, but we also have thousands more practitioners, educators, designers out in the world, which, which is why this campaign of bringing everyone together and having them share their work is, it's just so inspiring and so incredible. And honestly, it helps me sleep better at night because I know that it's on all of us to come together and to figure out where our point of interest is and how we can solve a challenge that's close to us.